Okay, welcome everyone. The Joint Committees on Labor and Technology and Health and Human Services uh, Joint uh, Committee Agenda. It's Monday, February 12th in Conference Room 224, it's 3 p.m. Okay, in the event that something catastrophic happens uh, in terms of uh, the video conferencing, we'll be coming back on December, excuse me, December, <laughs> February 14th at 3.30 p.m. Okay, and also, you'll be having a one-minute testimony limit for everyone. Okay. Okay, up first, Senate Bill 3215 relating to insurance. Okay, up first, we have uh, ELIR. Okay, thank you very much. Attorney General's office. Okay, we comments or on Zoom? Good afternoon, I'm Deputy Attorney General Andrew Kim. As provided in our written testimony, this bill may be subject to an ERISA preemption challenge. To mitigate this risk, we provided suggestions, which are one, to replace the word sell with offer on page two, line six. Two, delete the sentence requiring an employer to contribute to the employee's health savings account. And three, delete the paragraph requiring an insurer to file a report with the commissioner on page three. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have Medicare for All, Hawaii. Dennis Miller in opposition. Okay, Unite Here Local 5. Okay, also in opposition. Okay, Betsy Skolnick. Okay, in support. Okay, members, we do have late testimony. Regina Gregory, Shannon Rudolph. Jay DeCosta. Okay, Jay DeCosta is in support. Okay. okay. Regina Gregory and Shannon Rudolph are both in opposition. Any others wish you to testify? Senate Bill 3215. Seeing non members, questions? Okay. Questions? I think so. I, I don't know if maybe the partner who can answer this question. Um, so the, the you announce yourself. You announce yourself. Yes, Joanne Vittenhar from the Department of Labor. Thank you. Hello. Um, so could you answer um, the, the, have you seen the AG's recommendation to get past the ERISA problem um, that says if we change the language, would we still be subject to um, ERISA problems? Well, the department would feel that we would still have problems, challenges with the ERISA. Anytime new, um, through the ERISA Act, anytime that we mandate an employer to do something such as having to provide more than one health care plan, uh, that would go in um, against our prepaid health care law, which jeopardizes the ERISA. Yeah. So if we said may, it still would jeopardize. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions, members? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2547 relating to taxation. This would establish income tax credits for employers who offer employer provided or employer sponsored child care services for their employees. Okay, up first we have dual tax. Okay, thank you very much. Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika on Zoom. Uh, yes, hi, good afternoon, uh, Chair and members of the committee. This is Jade McMillan on behalf of Tom Yamachika for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We've submitted some comments on the measure. We'll stand on a written comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have uh, Retail Merchants of Hawaii, Tina Yamaki. Okay, on Zoom. Okay. Okay, support. Okay, up next we have Mike Yosua, NFIB. Okay, support Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. Okay, 
and support Betsy Skolnick. Okay, also in support. Okay, we have late testimony from Sherm Hawaii, Rosanna Nolan, and Aaron Hogan. Okay. okay any others wishing to testify? Okay, seeing none members, questions. Okay, seeing none, let's move on to the next measure. Okay, it's in bill 2930. Okay, leading to employee benefits. Okay, of course, we have uh, DLIR. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Constance Yonashiro. On Zoom. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Constance Yonashiro for the Civil Rights Commission. The ACRC supports the intent of this bill, which recognizes the importance of early bonding, especially for infants in neonatal care, and alleviate some of the burdens on new parents who have newborns by extending family leave in certain circumstances. The commission has some concerns about section four of the bill, which requires the ACRC to amend its administrative rule to include neonatal care anywhere the terms pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions or similar phrase appears. The ACRC does not enforce the family leave laws found in Chapter 398, which is outside our jurisdiction. Thank you, and I'll be available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, up next, we have DHS. Okay, and support. Okay, Kirby Shaw, DCAP. Okay, also in support. White Children's Action Network Speaks, Nicole Wu. Okay, thank you very much. HSTA, also TUI president. Oh, HSTA stands on its written testimony. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, breastfeeding, how about you? Patricia Bailik. Okay, support. Okay, Sherm, how about you? Okay, any comments? Okay, Todd Taniguchi, Betsy Skolnick. Michael Older. Okay, all in support. Okay, let's see if we have any state testimony. Okay, we do not. Any others wish you to testify? Okay, Senate Bill 2930. Seeing none members, questions? Is anyone, so sorry, may I have a question? Oh, sure. Yes, Let's thank see. you. For, um, is anyone here from Sherm? No. Okay, never mind then. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions, members? Okay, so now let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2973, okay, related to economic development. Okay, it requires the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations to establish a three-year child credit pilot grant program to provide grants to employers to assist in offering a child care or caregiving support for their employees. Okay, up first, we have a uh, Executive Office on Early Learning. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, up next, we have uh, Chamber of Commerce. How about you? Okay. Hello. Aloha, Senators. Eliza Tabo with Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Um, we stand in support, strong support of this measure and offer a few amendments um, for consideration. Uh, these are after talking with the Office of Early Learning as well as DLIR. Um, and so we would like to add an income requirement for employees, allow DLR, DLIR to collect a fee for the administration of the program, um, allow DLIR to contract for services instead of mandating that it's a nonprofit, um, we'd also like to define qualified employer, qualified employee, and qualified em provider for the services. Um, additionally, we'd like to uh, remove the appropriation amount for now for discussion purposes and provide a cap to annual amount for assistance for uh, the families or individuals receiving the assistance. And I'm here for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, up next we have the retail merchants of Hawaii, Tina Yamaki. Aloha and good afternoon. I'm Tini Yamaki with Retail Merchants, and I'm apologizing. I'm having some technical difficulties, but we stand in support on this measure. Mahalo. 
Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have the Hawaii Food Industry Association on Circle on Zoom. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, up next, we have the Alzheimer's Association of Hawaii. Ron Shimabuku. Okay, support. Gary Simon. Hawaii Family Caregiver Coalition. Okay, up next, we have uh, in support. Gene Evans, AAUW of Hawaii. Okay, support Young He Overly. Okay, also in support. Okay, we do have late testimony from Sherm Hawaii in support. Okay. Okay, and then we have Kapolei Chamber of Commerce, Kieran Pope. Also in support. Any others wishing to testify? Senate Bill 2973. Sure. Oh. Good afternoon, Chair. Chair San Ventura, I'm Madam Vice Chair and members of the um, Joint Committee. Giovanni Dela Cruz, Executive Director of the Office of Committee Services. First of all, I would like to um, express our sincerest apology. We thought we submitted a testimony on this measure, but I would like to um, add that. Uh, uh, we uh, strongly support the concept of the bill. Um, we believe that it will help the um, uh, people who need it the most. Um, but uh, similarly to the House version, we offer um, comments to uh, the bills. <clears throat> and among the many other things that we'd like to comment is that uh, what is the uh, licensure requirements that will be required and who will be um, in charge of checking that those um, license or, or, or those child care facilities are in compliance. Particularly, we just saw a civil bit article today talking about such um, um, not being compliance. Uh, however, like what I've always um, respectfully says that um, OCS just posing this question, but might not necessarily um, have all the, uh, might have the technical expertise to make um, answers or provide answers to those questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Any others wish you to testify? Yes, Bill 2973. Seeing none members, questions? Yes. Chair? Um, Department of Labor? Anybody here from Department of Labor? Giovanni. Giovanni. Hi. <laughs> so, um, the bill is very general, but it basically puts it in the Department of Labor, Kuleana, to establish this grant, um, this caregiving pilot grant program. My question is, well, I have a whole bunch of questions. Um, basically, how do you folks to, how do you propose to fill in the PUCAs? I mean, like how much of a grant? Are there going to be any income limits? Uh, is a multinational corporation going to be able to apply for this grant? Because it doesn't talk about small business. You know, um, um, precisely, Madam um, Chair, your questions are also my questions. Okay. Um, if I may have the time to um, read the questions that I have, actually, I have 10 questions and among many other things. One of the question is, what is the administrative percentage um, yeah. that will be appropriated to the administrative um, spending agency? whether the nonprofit agency would be required to use particular standards in determining which employer to award to, what is the maximum or minimum allowed uh, for the nonprofit admin costs, will there be a cap on the um, financial support a client employee might be able to receive, what would be the maximum or minimum age of child uh, or of children would be eligible for care, what would be the minimum and maximum dollar amount, if any, that would be authorized for payment to the providers of child care services? What, again, what licensure requirements would it be required for providers uh, of child care? Would there be any limitations that would, be, that would prevent persons who are relatives of children being cared for from being the providers of the care? What would be the minimum and maximum dollar amount, if any, that would be awarded to a qualified employer? Uh, will there be a required financial participation from the employer? Okay, so as it's written, the Department of Labor is unable to implement this bill because it is too general. 
Yes. Okay, thank Madam you. Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, members, any other questions? Is there any agency that can implement this bill in the room? Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's a good bill. The concept is good, but I'm just wondering, um, we need an administering agency. Agency departments as it can. Okay, members, any other questions? I have a quick question for the chamber. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. No, so um, thank you for being here. So your testimony um, shares that you have been in discussion with certain organizations, mm -hmm. including the Office of Community Services. There's a number of requested um, amendments um, that pretty much puts it on the on the Department of Labor. So um, do you still stand behind uh, th these uh, comments, uh, these uh, suggested amendments? Yeah, so um, I've reached out to Giovanni as well as um, Office of Early Learning that testified on the House bill um, and took their input in and offered those amendments according to their input and their questions. I think many of them he just asked were addressed in the testimony. Um, a lot of the questions too, I think, are administrative questions that mm -hmm. the department would have to determine on their own. Um, I don't know that it's for Chamber to, to opine on that, but um, I do think that the bill offers a lot of really good opportunities to help people that are caring for Kapuna, people with disabilities, as well as children. Um, and we know from a workforce standpoint that the shortage is really impacted by these things. So that's why we're very supportive. I think for the most part, we're all in agreement that we want to support, uh, we want to do certain things, but the uh, um, when the administrating um, agency has some concerns about implementing the measure, um, and it sounds like you guys have been in discussion, but you know we've heard uh, just a little different. Uh, you know, um, again, I, I'm not quite sure this is ready for prime time. Yeah. Well, we're happy to keep working with the office okay. The agency. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, you. Vice Chair. Um, I'd like to ask the Office of Early Learning. Um, since you were involved in this conversation. So my government affairs specialist spoke with them. So I was actually texting her. So I think she might be outside. So I cannot answer these questions directly. But not the office doesn't have expertise in order to administer something. I did not. I did not say um, what those recommendations are right now. Thank you. Executive Director, please. Sorry, Chair, if I may. Yes, um, the uh, Chamber of Commerce did reach out in my office, to my office. And for the record, I did say we support the concept of the bill, but reiterated to her that our office might not have the technical expertise because of my 10 years experience at OCS. I've never um, administered child care. Um, program, although it's, I, we see that it's very important, but we see that there might be some you know, um, legal aspect. We'll, we'll dealing with with children's lives. So again, it's, I, I did respectfully reiterate that OCS might not have the technical expertise to administer such um, craft. Okay. Thank so you. I think moving forward, Executive Director, can we count on your commitment to continue the dialogue? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, members, any other questions? Yeah. Yes, seeing none, let's move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2474 relating to family leave. Okay, up first, we have Department of Labor, Industrial Relations. Okay, thank you very much with comments. Okay, Executive Office on Early Learning. Hi, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Yuko Arikawa, Cross Director of the Executive Office on Early Learning. We stand on our written testimony in support of this measure and defer to DLIR. We'd like to note that policies such as paid family leave allow working individuals opportunity to focus their care and attention on family members, which for newborns and young children is critical for their development while ensuring income and financial stability are not jeopardized. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have Oha. Michelle McCoy. 
Okay. And support. Okay. Department of the uh, Attorney General, Jack Ralph, on Zoom. Hi, uh, Chair Kino, uh, Chair San Bonaventura, members of the committees. I'm Deputy Attorney General Jack Ralph, here to provide some comments about Senate Bill 2474. Uh, the Department of the Attorney General um, has uh, identified some uh, areas of the bill that could present some legal issues. We've set these out more fully in our written testimony, but, but briefly today I'll just uh, identify that it's unclear how the newly created trust fund would be funded because the bill first provides that it will be employer and employee contributions based on average weekly wage, but then later the bill provides that an employer can deduct and withhold up to half of the cost of insurance premiums from employee salaries. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Again, these points are more fully set forth in our written testimony and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Up thank next, you. we have budget and finance director. Dr. Salaverio, okay, comments, okay, Department of Health. Also with comments, Kirby Shaw, DCAP, and okay, support, DHS, Director Betts. Okay, support, we have Councilmember Jen Kagiwara, okay, County of Hawaii, and okay, support, HGA. Hello, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. Nui Sebas with HGEA. We stand on a written testimony in opposition to this measure. Uh, to be clear, we fully support um, paid family medical leave program that is 100% employer paid and cannot justify um, additional costs for an employee. Malo. Thank you very much. Up next, we have uh, Rebecca Gardner. Okay. okay, support. Oh, okay. Yeah. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair. My name is Becky Gardner. I'm here on behalf of the Hawaii State Democratic Party Women's Caucus uh, in support of this measure. Just want to just take a moment just to say from personal experience, um, I had to take myself out of the workforce to, one, have a baby, then also take care of my mother who was diagnosed with a aggressive uterine cancer, and then had trouble finding work. After that time, I was out of the workforce for about a year or so, and then had to leave the workforce again to have another baby and help my father take care of her, his mother, while she was in hospice. And I guess I just want to stress that this is not just a gender issue. This affects all of the caretakers in the family, especially when we need two wage earners in every family. And as a member of the sandwich generation, I think all of us are starting to appreciate that. So as a gender neutral matter, I think it's important you give this measure um, your serious consideration. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have the uh, Hawaii Hunger Action Network in support. Daniela. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Daniela Spoto. I'm here representing the Hunger Action Network, which is a coalition of 20 organizations working to eradicate food insecurity. Um, we understand that, um, that this is a, an issue that will actually be able to support working families. Um, food insecurity is something that is actually rooted in poverty. And we understand that this measure has been really well thought out. Um, it contains a lot of provisions that have been well studied and researched over the past several years that the legislature has considered passing such legislation. Um, and we know that there's a lot of, um, some opposition among the business community, but we do think the provisions in this bill um, address a lot of the things that have been brought up in the past. And it um, really is time for Hawaii to pass this measure. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Mike Wynn, Law Care. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Mike Wynn of the Loha Care. We're here in support of paid family and medical leave. Um, it has been shown that this does benefit overall health, mental health, and just overall well being for low income families. So we stand in support. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have Nicole Wu, White Children's Action Network Speaks. Aloha, Chair. Thank you for hearing this bill. Um, 
I am Nicole Wu from Hawaii Children's Action Network Speaks, and we support this bill. Um, to the AG's comments, um, there's a House Bill, um, HB 2757, that addresses some of the issues um, that is in this current bill. So I definitely um, encourage uh, legislators to take a look at the House Bill, because um, it does actually take, take into consideration some of those definitions. Um, for HGEA's opposition, um, we're putting together a payroll deduction system that's the same as like Social Security and Medicare, where it's 50-50 employers and employees. That's also how almost all the states, 13 states in the District of Columbia, are personally funding their paid family leave programs. There's only one that's doing what HGEA um, recommends, which is putting it entirely on the employers, which as I could imagine that would cause opposition from the business community. So we think it's pretty fair to split it 50-50. And finally, for the small businesses, um, this bill you know, can actually help them afford to keep their best employees. The small businesses can keep, keep them from going to larger employers who have these benefit packages that small employers can't afford by doing a, a payroll tax deduction that's very small. It actually helps them plan and prepare for the leaves that their employees might have to take. So I hope that they Sorry, will I take a good look. Your time is up, but mm -hmm. can you please uh, wrap it up? Yep. So I encourage the business community to also take a real good look at how this bill would work because okay, we really want to help them too. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay, ARP Hawaii, Audrey Suga Nakagawa. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. I'm Audrey Suganakagawa, the Advocacy Director for ARP Hawaii. We strongly support this measure. I just want to kind of highlight a little bit of my testimony in which we want to point out there's over 154,000 caregivers who are taking care of their loved ones at home. And this doesn't account for the working parents, the ones who are taking care of their children, newborns, and other family members who might be experiencing some kind of a serious illness or disabilities. And so this paid family leave is something that would benefit so many people who are struggling to care for their loved ones, as well as trying to take care of their own um, uh, you know, responsibilities at the, at the job. And so this bill is long overdue. It would really help many, many members of our community. It would help our, ben our employers who don't want to lose their good workers. And of course, it saves taxpayers money because once people leave their jobs, they are going to drain down their savings and become dependent on public programs, you know. So this is a win-win program for all. So thank you very much to testify in strong support. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have the Hawaii uh, Public Health Institute. Good afternoon, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committees. Peggy Mirazwa with the Hawaii Public Health Institute. We strongly support this piece of legislation. It would help to definitively increase health of families, uh, especially around improving health of mothers and fathers of who have new children, breastfeeding rates rise, and that if breastfeeding can be sustained for longer, that helps babies be healthy throughout their lives. Uh, and it also helps families to care for their kapuna. So many people said many positive, wonderful things about this bill, and we too agree with it. It's a great piece of uh, legislation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have Young He Overly. Good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. My name is um, Young Yeoverly, and I am public policy chair for AAUW Hawaii. Uh, in addition to what's uh, in, in, in our written testimony, uh, I do want to echo Nicole Wu's from HCAN sentiment about how this will really benefit small businesses here, because we are at risk of losing uh, employees to larger businesses who offer paid leave, as well as to mainland uh, who have a paid leave law. So, and uh, for paid leave coalition, I've been reaching out to small businesses. And at first, there seems to be a lot of misunderstanding of what this is. Uh, but once they understand that it works like social security, they get it. 
and they accept it and they see the benefit of it. So I do want to emphasize that. And uh, at personal level, I uh, took four months to take care of my dad. Uh, your, your time is up. Could you please wrap it up? Sure. And um, I was fortunate to be retired to take care of my dad. I would hate to see other people who couldn't do that because they don't have pay leave. So okay. thank, thank you, you very much. HSTA. Aloha, Laverne Moore, and speaking on behalf of Osa Tui, president of the Hawaii State Teachers Association. The association supports this bill. The majority of our workforce in Hawaii cannot afford to take unpaid leave to care for a new child or assist a family member with serious health conditions. All workers deserve access to family leave. A public insurance model that includes all eligible workers in the state is affordable. The Institute for Women's Policy Research studied the use and cost of family leave insurance for our state and found that the annual cost to cover 16 weeks of leave for a worker making 48000 would be roughly $58, a small price to pay for the financial security guaranteed by 16 weeks of paid family leave. The HSDA asks your com committee to support this bill. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, Michael Goloyu Jr., Democratic Party of Hawaii. Uh, so merchants. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Okay, good afternoon. Michael Gloy Jr. on behalf of the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Um, we stand in full support of this bill. We appreciate the fact that it and it recognizes and supports all families uh, legally re recognized here in the state of Hawaii. And we encourage you to pass this bill, as others have already said, much better than I can. So on behalf of the Stonewall Caucus, we encourage you to pass this bill. Mahalo. Hey, thank you very much. We tell merchants of Hawaii. Aloha and good afternoon. We respectfully oppose this measure. Leave is used when employees need to take care of someone else who is a family member. And sick leave and TDI is when that employee themselves is sick and injured. And, you know, employers want to take care of their employees, but there has to be a balance of what business can afford. Many employers already offer benefits that include significant paid time off to those employees who have earned it in addition to mandated family leave for employees to care for their family who are ill or um, ensure their jobs are secure when they return from work. We want to point out that Hawaii is also the only state in the entire nation that mandates medical coverage for our employees in health care. For a small business, that cost could be anywhere from about $900 a month or more per employee. And for a small business, that's very hard to take sometimes. Even with the recent uh, $2 increase in minimum wage, we saw so many small businesses slowly and quietly closing their doors. Um, we had a lot of um, expenses and things like that in the past. And if you add this onto it, employers Excuse me, are not... Tina. Okay. Uh, sorry, your, your time is up. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say if you add more or anytime you touch retail or anything like that, the prices of groceries and everything else is going to go up and we're just going to keep being the most expensive state in the nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Up next, we have uh, Catholic Charities Hawaii. Oh, uh, uh, Chair Aquino and Chair San Buenaventura. I'm Betty Lou Larson yeah. representing Catholic Charities Hawaii. Uh, we support this bill because we see that this would not only affect lower income wage earners, but many Ellis families and middle income families, because they're all struggling to maintain the high cost of living. We feel that often this kind of unexpected tragedy or illness in the family can really have dire results for the family. Uh, if one income is lost or if the full income is lost in a one parent family, they're just struggling and can hardly make it. So we appreciate your uh, consideration of this bill to give hope to these families who otherwise may have no other hope. They're in dire straits. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Up next, we have the Hawaii Restaurant Association, Victor Lim, okay, in opposition. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Chair uh, Aquino and Chair Bonaventura and members of the committee. This is Victor Lim calling you, in, ch checking in from Washington, D.C. right now. Uh, the Hawaii Restaurant Association uh, opposed this bill. It's purely because we're like the retail merchants. Many of our businesses are small and medium-sized. And we are still reeling from the pandemic. And with all the challenges that we are facing today, uh, we really uh, cannot afford to absorb any more additional costs. The one message that we continue to hear from our membership is that 
we do not have any new mandates and cost increases that you are going to be imposing on, on our ability to survive. And really, we just really cannot take any more additional costs to our business. So thank you for giving us this opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much, uh, members. We have received over uh, 100 pieces of testimony, all in support, uh, six opposing and six with comments. Any others wish to testify? Please. And uh, you're next. Good afternoon, Chair Aquino and uh, Chair Bunevis, um, Ventura and committee members. Tom Jones with Gyotaku Japanese Restaurants. Um, the the intent is laudable, and you know I, I you know had senior parents that needed care in the past, um, but I, I think that the demand for uh, for care. Um, might outpace the, the you know, fund's ability to pay for it. I have 180 employees. I can imagine how many of our employees might you know, apply for this benefit <clears throat> at this time, and I want to help them. Um, but uh, you know, to talk about maintaining employees, but I might at any given time have four or five or six employees out for 16 or 18 weeks at a time um, if this benefit were to become available to them. So I, I think the math isn't really quite there. I, I think again too, like with uh, unemployment insurance, we have to refund, you know, repay and refill those the coffers for unemployment insurance. I think that the expense of this project, you know, this this um, benefit is going to be. A pretty significant and I think a lot of research needs to be done before it moves forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any others wishing please? Good afternoon chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. Um, I'm here as a working mom in strong support of SB 2474. I'd like to share a snapshot of what I believe isn't out of the ordinary for working parents of young children today like me. Today begins the seventh week of the year. In week one and week two, my eight-year-old son and I fell ill to COVID. In week three, my two-year-old daughter caught an unknown virus that took her out of daycare. In week five, she fell ill again with nonstop fever, experienced seizure, went, in, went to ER in an ambulance due to low oxygen levels, where we found out she had a UTI. In week six, she caught another virus and we kept her home to, ca to care for her. We pay, we pay nearly 1,800 a month for daycare and we don't get any of that back for caring for her at home. This morning, she woke up with a low-grade fever, and we are bracing ourselves for another round of home care for which we typically piece together our sick and vacation leave. Because like many Hawaii families dealing with the cost of living, we simply cannot afford to lose our income. In addition for caring for my two young kids, I have kupuna to consider. My mom, my kid's tutu, was hospi hospitalized for some time recently due to severe sepsis. I took time off to care for her. Being part of the sandwich generation, dealing with the responsibilities of caring for both young children and aging parents is exacerbated when you consider Excuse Hawaii's me. cost of living. I do apologize, but uh, could you please um, summarize? Absolutely. Um, I have it. Uh, we, we have limited sick and vacation leave. Um, we don't have any left to, for FMLA qualifying situations, like the time I had to take for my newborns, my then newborns. Um, I just want to say, please don't give up on paid family leave. So many families in Hawaii need it, um, and we shouldn't give up on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Please. Good afternoon, Chair Aquino and uh, Chair San Bernaventura and members of this committee. My name is Serge Alquabilia. I'm an executive director of the Hawaii Workers Center, and we stand in strong support uh, of this bill. I just wanted to share a personal story. I work for an employer that provided very generous 12 weeks of paid parental leave. Um, I took nine weeks of that time to take when my son was born to help take care of um, my wife. You know, she needed time, time um, to recover. Uh, she asked me to run errands, get food, and just the chance to be able to bond with my son was probably some of the best moments um, of my life. You know, my son is now almost 10 years old, but I look back now at those memories and those memories were just priceless. You know, our jobs, we can drop dead tomorrow and our jobs may replace us in a week or two, right? But those memories and our families are the ones that remain forever. Um, you know, I ask that you please continue to support this bill. You know, just the ability to be able to uh, put your family first and not have to worry about if you can afford the next paycheck should be a privilege that should be available to all of us, not just for a select few. Thank you so much and um, please support this bill. Thank you very much. Any others wishing to testify? Yes, okay, seeing none members, questions? Um, okay. Vice Chair. Uh, Labor Department, please. Um, 
the concept is good here. Um, they're asking for, it's currently what, it's four weeks of paid or an unpaid family leave, is that correct? The current law. I'm not, I do have my experts here, and depending what the type of questions you have, I can call yeah, them so up. Maybe sure. Cheryl Lee, Administrator for the Wage Standards Division. So currently it's four weeks. So I know that we had this before, like last session, and we had asked uh, for Labor Department to look at TDI and, and some of the other um, health benefits that go to employees, and, and family leave was an important part of it. So they're mentioning TDI be used as well in this bill. So can you explain briefly what can be done, if anything, in terms of accommodating some of the needs for family leave? Oh. Stay show. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Can I absolutely repeat the question again? OK, so remember, last session, yeah. we had the same bill. And we're looking at family leave and how may we accommodate some of these working families that, right. that need more than I guess the four weeks. This one asks for 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. It also asks um, that TDI um, be allowed for recovery um, from childbirth. Yes. So what is the impact of that and can we accommodate the balancing? I know that we had asked the Labor Department during the interim to do a study of how we could balance employers' needs for employees and employees' needs to care for either parent or um, child. Is there anything in this bill that is something that can be a compromise, or, or is that? That's a very good question, Senator, and I wish that we had the answer for that. Um, you know, the TDI law is a law that has been in place for a while now. And it, there's so many um, challenges if we start touching the TDI law. And so I know that there's this bill that talks about the TDI law, um, but when we talk about the TDI law, this is, it, TDI, you have premiums and there is no premiums for this. And so we really can't just mesh it together. Um, one of the things that I think we can look at is the, amount of TDI that is allowed through the existing TDI law. We also have the um, family leave and it is unpaid. And I know that we're trying to go and change that direct trajectory so that it is covered as paid leave. Um, I think that there are things that we can look at um, to make some adjustments However, with the staffing that we have right now, we wouldn't have a program that we would be able to look at who could pay such bills, such claims. Um, and so that makes it difficult. We don't really have anything in place currently. And as it is right now, we're having difficulty even hiring for the existing programs that we have. So to answer your question, there's a lot of things we offer in um, the testimony that there may be some um, lines that we could have looked at the crafting of the, the, the bill itself to make some changes. Um, so is it chapter 398? So is that where we would add in a degrees? Or... If we, if we if this one on so you guys can work on something with this bill before we send it out? Well, let me just clarify I, that uh, the intention is to move uh, this measure, but mm -hmm. we're going to be deferring decision making to Wednesday. So it gives us some time to figure out some of the issues uh, that have been highlighted in the testimony. Thank you, mm -hmm. Vice Chair. Okay. Sure. All right. That's thank you very much. Short days, two, two, two long days. Two short days. Senator Favello. Sorry, I wasn't here for the whole time, but 
I won't restrain myself. Anyway, um, just going forward, um, I understand a lot of the testimony and opposition, but this is the thing that what some of them don't understand is being alone, single, and your child had COVID, and you work in one store that don't give a rip about your family, not all, the sharing on a considered store's name. It's in my community. Um, but anyway, they don't care. She lost her home. She had to move off the island and go back to family on another neighbor island because of that two week period of not getting paid. Could not afford home care. She was taking, taking off of work because her kid couldn't go to school, so she had to stay home. So I understand you guys get the complication with TDI and you guys saying that there's, there's a the fine line with TDI. But we got to figure out something that we can find an equal medium because this is a case by case basis, yeah, but it's happening one too often. And then we wonder why we have homelessness and houselessness and people on the streets. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, members. Any other questions? Yes, I do. Stick okay. around. Sorry. Chair? Okay, so um, I think I was in high school or even earlier when the TDI law came into being here. Well, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Before that. Way before that, then. <laughs> so, my, mem my understanding, okay, and that was a, the Takamine bill, it was we were the first state yes. to pass it. And I think we're one of the few states, we may still be the only state with, with it. So because we were the first state, there was no TDI insurance. The insurance company came into the vacuum and started offering premiums. So while you folks are studying this, and this is what I shared with Chair, um, with Chair Aquino, is that as this moves forward, there should be at least an opening for the insurance companies to come in to sh to start offering premiums and start offering benefits so that hopefully, just like the TDI insurance, the premiums, at least when I was an employer, I mean, not anymore, but when I was employed was was pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. And um, and the employee contribution was minimal which is what um, HGA wants, like zero contribution, but that's, that's all my comment is, unless you have anything else to add. I mean, in, I, wasn't, I was not, never in labor committee. So was there any kind of discussion to allow for, but I do know that the paid family leave because and the HHS has been a topic for many, many years. Has there been, has there been at least a discussion with the insurance commissioner to somehow incentivize um, the ability for, I know not, now is not the time with a lot of insurance companies leave, leaving the state, um, but at least in the future for insurance companies to come in and start offering premiums. Thank you for that question, uh, Senator. That is something that has been talked about in the past, but I don't think it was um, talked about enough. We didn't exhaust that topic. Uh, I think that if, as a department, we don't have the resources to be able to pay such claims out, we are not in, our two divisions do not pay out claims. Um, so if we want to compare this to the TDI law, so the TDI law, the insurance carriers um, take in the claims and the Department of Labor, only if a claim is denied, mm -hmm. do we process the appeal. So we do the adjudication on a TDI denial. And so that's something that we could take a look at. And that was part of, you know, we talked mm -hmm. before about maybe a study on that, just so that we can look at the risk for the state to have it or with the insurance. But the insurance company at that point, and they still don't have that policy, that new type of policy, but that's not something that um, we've extended that conversation. But like I said, back in 1968, there wasn't any TDI right, policy but either. No, this is but we, just going we, back we created an environment yes. for the insurance companies and to come giving in. giving them that time to be able to do that, I think would be good. I think we need to reach out to them and see 
what type of policies they could spin up on that. Okay. Thank Just you. as an option. All right. Uh, we do have uh, someone on Zoom that I forgot. Uh, um, I do apologize. Leilani Kaili Ava. You have Mahalo. one minute. Okay. Mahalo. I'm a mother of three sons and a community leader from Hawaii Island. Paid leave is important to me because I think about when one doctor told me and my husband that my son was not going to make it into this world. Soon I was needed on Oahu to be closely monitored before birthing my son who was hospitalized for another seven months. I stayed at my newborn's bedside while my husband took time off from work, having to travel back and forth every two weeks to bond with our newborn and to give me a break. I exhausted my TDI from my job, needed to quit, need to bond to, needed to breastfeed for his development, knowing that he may have challenges in the future. Paid leave would have helped us. Families should not have to choose between their health, their family, or their income. Strongly consider passing this bill for the sake of our ohana. Thank you for allowing me to share my testimony. Okay, thank you very much, Leilani. Okay, members, questions? Seeing none, Chair? Thank you very much. So for SB 1580, relating to labor standards at healthcare facilities, First up, oh, um, I just want to point out that there are other hearings after this joint hearing with labor. So I am going to be strict with a one minute and I apologize to all of you because I know there's 160 people who have registered. So first up, <laughs> Department of Attorney General comments. Please Good afternoon, proceed. Chairs, Vice Chair. My name is Jim Halverson. I'm the Supervising Deputy Attorney General for the Employment Law Division. Um, our recommendation in this and our comments is for the state and its hospitals to be uh, cut out of this bill uh, for the reasons set forth in our written testimony. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Nurses Association. OPEIU Local 50 um, in support. Rosalie Agassiu. Okay, got one minute. Yes, there's 159 Hi, other people. Vice Chair and Vice Chair of Committee and Members. Um, we strongly support this measure to establish minimum staffing standards. I just want to say that, you know, the 600 nurses of Kapiolani that did this strike brought attention to it. And just know that it's not just them. Um, there are many other nurses out there. This is a problem and we need to address it. And this, we feel this measure will help it greatly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, next up, Hawaii HGA in support, Jesse Silva. Okay, thank you very much. Next, Hawaii Nurses, American Nurses Association, Linda Bichinor in support. Please proceed. Thank you, aloha. Chair Aquino and Chair San, San Buenaventura, I am Linda Beachnor. I'm the Executive Director of Hawaii American Nurses Association. Hawaii ANA is the state's premier professional nursing organization, and we foster high standards of professional nursing practice, promote safe and ethical work environments, and advocate on healthcare issues that affect nurses and the public. We offer strong support for the intent of this bill, Hawaii ANA respectfully requests that the committees work with us to advocate for nurses and healthcare workers' safe working conditions. These conditions promote safe and optimal patient care, and that is the intent of this bill. We thank the committees for your commitment to the people of Hawaii. Thank, okay, you. thank you very much. Next, we have um, Hawaii Nurses Association again, Gabriel Pablo in support on Zoom. Are you there, Gabriel? Not okay. present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, I see Michael Galoyo for Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii and support. Please proceed. Uh, good afternoon again. Michael Galoyo, Jr., Chair of the Stonewall Caucus um, of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We stand in strong support of this legislation. Uh, we stood with the nurses on the strike line. They are not here to for themselves. They're here for everybody. They're here to make it a better, safer Hawaii. And I encourage you to work with the unions 
on this issue and only the unions. I'm not sure who that last speaker was or what organization she represents, but I ask you to stick with the unions. They know their people, they know their members, and they support their members. <laughs> And I support them. And so does the entire caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. We are the party of labor. We are the party that supports a safer Hawaii by safety, nerf, safety, safer nursing standards. So we don't just support the intent of this bill. We support what this bill will do to make it better for a better safe Hawaii. So thank you. We encourage you to pass this bill. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii State Center for Nursing, Laura Re Reichardt, providing comments. Thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Pacific Health in opposition, Amy Thomas. Okay. Thank you. We have one minute. Hi, thank you. Good afternoon, chairs. My name is Amy Thomas. I'm the System Chief Nurse for Hawaii Pacific Health. Um, we stand by our written testimony in opposition of this bill. Um, first, the items identified in this bill regarding staffing plans, meal breaks, rest, rest breaks, overtime, are already um, covered and exist in our collective bargaining agreements. Um, next, we are in a national shortage of healthcare workers and mandated ratios will not create a new workforce. They are the wrong solution because they don't address the underlying issues. We have seen this play out in California, which is the only state in the nation to have mandated ratios for already um, over two decades. And um, we see in that state that they have over 36,000 open nursing positions, as well as um, some of the highest rates of travel nurses in the, in the nation. So we know that it doesn't fix the nursing shortage. Um, this bill is bad for our state from an access to care and cost perspective. Mandatory ratios will affect healthcare organizations' ability to provide services, resulting in delays. And these will affect in our state most the rural hospitals, thank the you state very hospitals, much. and those that please um, wrap it yes, up. Thank you. Thank yes, you. and I'm just saying that those that don't already have the financial constraints and the staffing constraints. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Department of Labor in opposition. Okay, thank you very much. Hawaii Health Systems Corporation, Edward Chu in opposition. <coughs> Good afternoon, Chair Aquino, Chair San Bonaventura, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Edward Chu. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of Hawaii Health Systems Corporation. Uh, you have a written testimony in opposition to this bill. I just wanted to point out that our highest priority is to provide quality care to the residents of our uh, communities that we serve. And with that, we do already follow industry uh, benchmark uh, staffing standards in terms of our nurses. Uh, the other point to, uh, thing to point out in our testimony is that, you know, we, as a state agency, our collective bargaining agreements are covered under Chapter 89, uh, Hawaii, Hawaii Revised Statutes, and also various other labor laws. And you know, working conditions, which is what this bill uh, encompasses, is subject to those collective bargaining um, statutes. So uh, we just have to respectfully point that out to the committee. And uh, thank you for your support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, Hawaii Healthcare Association of Hawaii Health and Rachel in opposition. Chair, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify in opposition to this uh, measure. HH and its members, we're working with all the educational institutions in the state to train more nurses, to add more nursing faculty at UH, and to ensure the salaries of nursing faculty are competitive. We're working to ensure we have adequate clinical placements for nurse training. The pay for nurses in Hawaii is competitive and is designed to attract and reward nurses. The median annual wage for nurses in Hawaii is 121,000, second only to California. Mandated staff to patient ratios add more complexity. They do not take into account severity of illness and individual patient needs. They do not produce more nurses and they create barriers to care. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'm available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Stephanie Pagaduan in support. Stephanie? Be present. Next, we have Amy Props, oh, sorry, P R O P S T, in support. I apologize if I butchered your name. Oh, good girl. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm Amy Probes from Probst. Kapiolani. I work in the NICU, and there is no actual true nursing shortage, as they are telling you. It's burnout, it's because of unsafe staffing ratios. We are tired. We are stretched too thin. They talk about how unsuccessful programs with set ratios have been, and it is misleading and not true. I've worked at other hospitals that don't have this in law. They do not have it in the contract, but they have these ratios. It works. 
The nurses are happy, the patients are happy. The care is safe. There has not been mistakes made. There's less errors. The mortality rates are better. And that's what's important, the patient. It is not management. It is the patient. That is what we are here for, a healthier, happier Hawaii. And that's where it starts, nursing, not management. I would really appreciate them to actually tell me the reason staff ratios are bad without using money. Thank you very much. Next, we have Daniel Paul Ross in support. Good afternoon. Thank you for hearing me. Um, so I said my name is Daniel Ross. I'm at, um, RN currently at Queensville the past 32 years. I've been doing bedside care for almost 40 years now um, in one capacity or another as a healthcare worker. Uh, I can tell you that I don't believe there's one single frontline healthcare worker who would not support this bill. The people that are opposed to it are management because they're concerned about the money when we're concerned about the patients and patient safety and nurse safety. There is not, as was stated, there is not a nurse shortage. We got lots of nurses. We have a shortage of nurses willing to work under the conditions that are currently available. People are wanting to leave the bedside. Nobody wants to work as a bedside nurse anymore because of the working conditions. This bill is not a panacea. It's not gonna fix every single issue, but it will go a long ways towards making things better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next we have Chelsea Zablocki in support. Chelsea, are you there in Zoom? Not present on Zoom, Chair. Marcella Copa in Zoom. Are you present in support? No. Nope. Not present on Zoom. Charlene Pang in support on Zoom. No. Nope. <clears throat> Next, we have Kazushi Haruyama in person in support. Kazushi? No. Nope. Okay. Next, we have Mylene Dulduwal in support on Zoom. Mylene, Mylene, are you present? Not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, so we have, those are the only ones registered to testify. Let me mention the ones who have provided written testimony. We have Pride at Work Hawaii in support, Randy Pereira, AFL-CIO in support, Hawaii Nurses Association in support, HNA Anna Legaspi in support, Erin for HNA in support, Christina Noguchi Desamito, De Hawaii Nurses Association in support, Casadra Raquel, Hawaii Nurses Association in support. Whole bunch of um, people from Hawaii Nurses Association in support. Okay. Um, Healthcare School of Hawaii in support. Unite Here Local 5 in support. Hawaii Pacific Health um, in support. Um, another test testifying for HNA. There's about um, a dozen people from HNA, at least. There's 160 people who have registered. Okay, Kapiolani Medical Center, Women and Children in support, Hawaii UPW in support, um, Kapiolani Medical Center, Joy in, for Kapiolani in support. We have Michael Robinson from Kapiolani Medical Center in opposition, Darla Sabri of Wilcox Medical Center in opposition, Palimomi Medical Center in opposition, Liberty Dialysis in opposition, Straub Medical Center in opposition, <laughs> Wesley Lowe of Ohana Pacific Health, Hale Makua in opposition, and we have 160 other people all in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1580? Um, let's go with this first, first, first and then we'll go with next. So sorry, Senators, I did register to speak in person. Okay. My name is Diana Walters. I am a RN at Capulani Medical Center. Um, I wrote a two minute thing thinking it was naively thinking it was two minutes, but I will cut that to the chase saying that just the first part and then really opposing what Amy Thomas has said. She, it, what management is saying is misleading and completely dishonest about the conditions we work under. Also, we are horrified that the director of nursing for UH Manoa would be against this when it will provide more jobs for their students. Their students will not burn out, will not have wasted all that money they went to school for, will stay in Hawaii and work here in Hawaii. It is unbelievable that he would 
oppose this. It is unbelievable that our management would not support us knowing what we do, knowing that almost all the nurses that are in management left the bedside because it was too hard, and it gets harder every year, and it's very difficult in Hawaii. And we, in our profession, are expected to do what you and your profession would be like having your job double booked every Thank day. You. Very double much. booked every day and yet we must squeeze it in and yet i'm sorry there's 160 other people who um, may or may not want to testify well i said the bulk of it they are not being honest and it is unbelievably wrong Madam thank Chair, you very much i'd okay. like to request that um we try to respect our opposition and, and you don't have to but to um just to let people have the position they have even though they're wrongheaded about it, but that that's my own personal request. In this capital, we try to be uh, focused on being kind to each other. And if we could try to aspire to that, I personally would appreciate it. Uh, thank you. There's no wrong on it. I'm not criticizing you at all. No, no. I'm sorry, we're one minute. 160 people, if we don't pass any of these bills today, by the lateral, it's dead. Okay, so we need to move on. But, and we need to allow other people to testify. So, JC. Chair, uh, Queen submitted testimony in opposition. Okay, Queen's. Okay, I'm sorry. It, it wasn't, I didn't call it out. Sorry. Okay, and um, wait a second. And I, I, I would like to echo um, Senator Lethary Hara's um, comments. Please focus on the testimony and not on what other people say, please. Okay, so first up, Sergio, 1580, one minute, 410. Okay. I have to get up, we have to leave by 430 <laughs> right. well, for the other hearings. Right. Chair's, uh, Chair Kino, so Chair San, uh, San Bernardino Ventura. My name is Sergio Alcubilla with the Hawaii Worker Center. We stand in strong support of this bill. Uh, my mom has been a bedside nurse for 54 years. It's what allowed us to immigrate to the US because she worked as a nurse in rural America. Um, you know, actually this evening, she's going to go to work at a 59 bed facility and she is the only nurse for that evening. She's always worried what's going to happen in an emergency and she's the only nurse at 70 something years old. You know, my two, of course, being Fili Filipino, my two sisters are also nurses. Between the two of them, there's 40 years of experience, right? And they say the same thing. My wife is also a nurse. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience. And one of the biggest complaints I've heard growing up is the staff to patient ratio and that they don't get breaks. You know, my wife, you know, she was working in a hospital in the Bronx, New York. The staff to patient ratio was there was 13 to one. And one day she didn't even have a chance to use the restroom. And she said she would never go back to nurse to um, hospital uh, care again. Um, and again, I just ask you that you please pass this bill. You know, the profit motive. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you so much, Senators. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify? I see, come on up, Melissa. So no one else has raised their hand. So please identify yourself. In your position. Aloha, my name is Melissa Pavlicek. I'm here on behalf of U.S. Renal Care. We submitted some late comments and I don't see them on the online, so I will make sure that you receive them. Our comments were, of course, we appreciate the intent of this measure. We do have federal regulations that address our outcomes and that, that guide our staffing, and um, we ask to please um, consider that the smallest facilities, such as the renal care facilities in the communities, may have the biggest challenge in meeting staffing needs. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on SD 1580? I'm sh come on up. Aloha, my name is Rachel Chung. I'm a former bedside nurse. I stand on my written committee, or my written testimony, um, but I just wanted to say what other nurses here have said is that there is not a nursing shortage. There is actually a shortage of people willing to work in these conditions. Um, and it is up to you, senators, to please force hospital administration to listen to the nurses' voices. Um, they need you and the patients need you to keep them safe. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1580 before I open it to questions? Sure, there's a number of questions. Okay, members, questions. Go ahead. Queens Hospital. Yes, Senator. I know you didn't, you didn't testify. I never read your, um, your question that I have. Um, staff, the minimum staff to patient ratio 
Is that is, you think that's an imaginary thing that's happening right now? Uh, no, no, Senator, we don't. Okay, uh, so how are you guys addressing it? Well, currently, um, we have uh, committees set up to review that. Uh, or also, every three to four hours at the hospital, our uh, managers look at the ratios and who is appointed to different patients, depending on their acuity, that changes. Um, if staff need to be redeployed during that time because there's a lack of uh, care in a certain area, then that redeployment takes place. Yeah, I'm just going to do something ask you this question. So on a personal note, I'm not going to say which queens because you get two. <laughs> got more than two. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Why you no. The one that I go to. Sorry. Yes, yes. But the reason why I say this, they had given me a medication to lower my heart rate because of my uh, flutter and murmur. Yeah. And if I didn't get up in the middle of the night and insisted to them to come to the room because my pressure went down to 30, all the way down. By the time they came, I already was feeling funny kind. They still had to get approval because she wasn't the nurse that was in charge, that that nurse that was in charge wasn't even there on staff. So these are the things they're talking about. And I never die, as you can see, I'm here. But these are the th situations that is more common than usual. They actually had to, I had the IV. I told them if they don't take the IV out because this is the one that's making my pressure down, I was gonna pull it. But the person that oversees them wasn't even there. And that's the problem that I hearing from everybody. And then I, another thing that I gonna say, and you didn't bring up this comment, I'm not gonna bring anybody else up. Sure. But when they compare it to California and Hawaii and shortage, and we know we don't have a shortage here, California approved for the mental health, for the nurses for Kaiser for mental health, they approved a better contract than the, in Hawaii. And they ate it. Kaiser guys ate it. The nurses ate it and, and the health care for mental health. So you cannot say that anybody over here is frustrated because of the money. It's because of their patience. And that's why I just hope you guys take that into consideration. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, okay, thanks, thanks, Senator, thank very much. I, again, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank well. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Chair. Senator Ihara, you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, yes, for the Hawaii State Nursing, Hawaii State Center for Nursing, Laura, Laura Reithart. I seen your testimony. Good afternoon, Senator. I, Laura Reithart. Um, that the Center for Nursing has been organizing a collective, nursing officer collective, and, and now the focus of the center, apparently. One of the advisory board priorities. One of the, so you have more than one advisory board? We, no, we have a governor-appointed advisory board, and, our, and we uh, convene many committees. Uh, we have residency committees, the nurse uh, leader collective, we have evidence-based practice, research, m many committees. Um, those committees in, uh, provide information up to the advisory board and our advisory board in October prioritized wellness as one of the priorities of the Center for Nursing. So, um, yeah, whether I know where there's effort to quote unquote force the, these corporations, healthcare corporations to do what they should do uh, but failing that, um, the underlying concern still is right there about the well-being of nurses. Um, and so it's a, to me, it's a shift from uh, a production-based, outcome-based organization to a values-based, so you value your human capital as, as much as um, the profit. Uh, and so I'm looking at, uh, even if this fails, which it might, that it's stronger for having come here. So it, that's where I'm looking at if there's a, if there's a, maybe it'll pass, but if not, then at least if there's a bounce. So the next session and, and on that the well being of nurses can, can truly be addressed because this can't go on forever. No, it cannot go on forever. And the well being of nurses is absolutely a priority of the Hawaii State Center for Nursing, the national data and the local data demonstrate, and as you can see in my testimony, that there are great needs. And there's also a, num a large number of efforts currently in play 
to try to impact the environment. The last couple of years have been very hard. Um, and the, the time it will take to find stability uh, is, will take time. It will not be immediate, um, but there are concerted efforts in play uh, to make systemic and statewide changes. So what, could it be on your agenda to come up with um, advice to the legislature of how we might uh, treat this matter holistically? We, we'd be happy to do that. And in fact, we are working on, we will be releasing in the next week or two, a projection, a, a quite extensive projection model to project how many nurses we will be needing in the coming years, because we know that um, not only is it a high demand role, uh, but it is a, it's a very, it, it's a very challenging role. Morally and physically it's challenging and also taking care of patients um, requires really it's a really special kind of person who becomes a nurse. So because of that, um, we know that, and we're also, I'll just say, we'll, we're also challenged with workforce overall. We have fewer working age people and nurses get the brunt of that care because we have so many retirees. With all of that, we know that we're going to be needing more nurses and it is a very complex question to answer. It's not easy. Um, so we're working on projections where um, we are, increasing our nurse residency programs. We have a wellness initiative. We're talking about, we're in the talks and investigating leadership training. Um, it, it's a multifactorial approach and we are very committed to contributing to many different aspects in healthcare and in particular in nursing. And we will work on those recommendations to the legislature if you ask. Is there, do you have a way to track the well-being of nurses? We do ask questions about the well-being of nurses in our so uh, biennial. Uh, so you really have a, a as best uh, a realistic gauge as to what's really going on Abs in the well-being of, of Absolutely. We have the largest survey of nurses in our state. Uh, this past year we had the largest response rate in our 17 year history and we do have questions about well-being and i'd be happy to send them your way i hope you folks are trusted by the nurses we try our best okay. thank you okay thank you any other questions members um i have a, a okay i have a question not not of you um who's representing kapiolani as far as union you are come on up um, could you identify yourself again? Sorry. I am Rosalie Agus Yu. I'm the president of the Hawaii Nurses Association, but you can call me Rose. Okay, thank you, Rose. So, I mean, I read a number and like um, Sergio Filipino. I know a lot of, I know a lot of nurses, <laughs> you know, um, a lot of my clients are nurses. You folks have a thankless job. I really do thank you guys for your service, especially after COVID. I mean, you folks went through the ringer on that one. But here's the, you know, and I also hear what you're saying, but people may oppose this, not because they're against nurses, because I'm sure everybody's for nurses. But what I'm concerned about, and that's the reason I'm asking you here, because I know you folks just went on strike. Um, didn't you folks, bargain these positions in your contract to ensure that you folks have you know have a hammer i mean um, we're attempting to okay but no because let me let me tell you why okay and i could see why there are people who op oppose it but are for nurses <clears throat> i was reading this thing i was going how are you going to enforce this the enforcement is one thousand dollars per violation it's cheaper for them to violate than it is to pay you guys triple time. Mm. That's why I'm thinking, you know, like what Sander Ihara is thinking, negotiate this thing. Because my husband's union labor, I mean, he hates losing his meal breaks, but he loves being paid triple time whenever he loses it. Okay, that, but you know, he's not, he's not a nurse though, okay? So that's what I'm telling you folks. I read, I, I agree with you. They paying travel nurses more. You guys negotiate for more than the travel nurses because we would rather have it local, right? But do you understand? No, 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 I, I hear you. No, but it's like that. Yeah. You see where the nurses are. It's not about that. It's just trying to yeah. work in the environment, getting those ratios just 
to be there, I mean, it's great to hear from people, but unless you put that pair of gloves on and the mask yeah. and you're sitting there and you're taking care of that patient head to toe and still willing to do it and you want to take the best Especially care. the most yes. we're not awful thought, patient We're not thinking is. double I mean, time, triple time. We're just thinking yeah. we just want enough nurses to take care no, of all I, these patients. I, I hear you. So I, that's why I'm glad you saw that because, we. I mean, great. Yeah. We'd love to say double time and triple time. But, you know, we're realistic, too. Yeah. We're realistic. But, okay. I mean, it's already 600 nurses. And these are baby, mother, women. These are nurses that they don't want to make a lot of trouble. Now, Queen's under their head. Okay, wait a second. That's coming down. No, 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 I'm just saying. Just saying. Okay. Cat, cat, cat. No, no, I mean Queen's nurses. Yeah. Oh, that's a rumble to watch out yeah. for. But the nurses at CAP, for yeah. them to stand up, yeah. almost 600 of them on the line. And if you came out, and I know some of you came out, yeah. and we so appreciate that because we've been trying to talk and try to do it decently inside the hospital. Okay. And it took so much to step out of the hospital. Okay. And you know what was worse? Was knowing the care that was given in the hospital was not the high care that we wanted. So that's why everybody goes, why seven days? Because we can't have our patients be taken yeah. care of whoever they brought in. Yeah. It kills, even to this day, people are so sad and upset. They're so sad and upset that they're still, they even, you know those scabs? They're still working with us. I'm and sorry, I, I'm looking at the time because yeah, I want to I wanna but pass some more. The, the type of things we're having, and we don't like to complain about it, but almost 600 nurses went out to complain about and let us be heard. So we, we appreciate okay. that you're hearing us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any any other questions on SB 1580? Seeing none, moving on. Um, SB 2569, relating to workplace safety. First up, we have Hawaii State Center for Nursing in support. Thank you very much. Next, we have Betty Skolnick in support. Andy Kaganoro in support, Hawaii Co Coast Comprehensive Health Center in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 26? <coughs> I'm sorry, it's, hold on. Yes, please proceed. 2869. Hi, aloha, I'm Lena. I'm Lena Kanana from the Wainai Comprehensive Health Center. Sorry, thank you for allowing me to testify. Uh, sheesh. With numerous uh, threats and uh, assaults on our staff, um, obtaining adequate and timely response from local uh, law enforcement has been challenging and our health center is in strong support of Senate Bill 2569. Um, for instance, one of our, our behavioral health providers had to take three days off just to go and uh, do a police report as well as file for TRO. So we're in strong support of this where we as a health center could apply for a TRO on behalf of our staff. Um, uh, it's a step in the right direction by allowing health centers like us to take a positive step in securing TROs for our, for our staff and fostering a, uh, a safe work environment. Um, other states have done this, other states like Arkansas, California, Colorado, and Georgia. And we believe that this aligns with the OSHA Act of 1970 that requires employers to provide a safe, place of employment that is free from these hazards. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 2569? Moving on. Oh, members, any questions? Seeing none, moving on. SB 2661, relating to homelessness. First up, Dr. Liu and State Health Planning and <laughs> Development Agency in support. Next up, um, Deputy AG providing comments. Good afternoon, chairs, committee members, co-chairs. My name is Melissa Lewis. I'm a deputy attorney general. I've provided, we, our office has provided comments on this bill. Specifically, it's for the for, uh, grants um, required by the Constitution that standards be implemented with the grant, if you're, the state's going to be giving <coughs> grants of public funds. Sample grant, um, grant standards are attached to our comments. Sorry, yes, 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 yes. And then there's also issues regarding this implementation since DHS already has a work program. Yes. And the part of the current DHS work program would be inconsistent with the this Thank measure. You. 
Okay, next up, we have Department of Human Services providing comments. Good afternoon, um, Chair Sanborn, of Chair, Chair Aquino, and members. My name is Scott Morishiga. I'm the Administrator of the Benefit, Employment, and Support Services Division. On behalf of Director Betts, we stand on our written testimony with comments and am available for any questions. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Catholic Charities with Betty Lou Larson in support. Betty, are you there in Zoom? Not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. And next we have Bonnie Kahakui, Hawaii State Procurement Office, providing comments. Hawaii Youth Services Network in support. Three other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 2661? Members. Yeah, I've got like two minutes, okay? okay. And that includes decision making. Hey, hello, hello, members of both committees. Uh, my name is Danson Hana. I'm testifying in strong support of this bill. Um, most notably, part of this bill includes an educational component for financial literacy skills. I'm passionate about this bill because I experienced firsthand the upward mobility that financial literacy can bring. Um, I grew up in a single income family of four, um, grew up in a poor household, never thought I would ever become a homeowner. But because of um, what I learned from through financial literacy, I was able to eventually become a homeowner. Um, but despite everything I grew up you know, going through, I, I consider myself to be lucky to have been able to overcome all of that because I know a lot of our most vulnerable populations, especially the homeless community, don't have that opportunity. Um, so, so really please strongly consider this. Um, this is one of the most efficient ways that we can use our taxpayer money um, to help people to help themselves. Um, as the old saying goes, um, if you give a person a fish, you feed them for a day. If you teach a person to fish, you'll feed them for life. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 2661? Members, any question? I saw Sandra Moriwaki. If you could make it short, You're I'd sure. appreciate uh, it. Could Scott, Scott. <laughs> Which Scott? This Scott. This one, Scott. This, okay. This Scott. <laughs> Morishige. Morishige. Yeah. Morishige. From the Department of Human Services. That's the administrator. Um, so looking at this bill and what the AG's comments are, can you um, administer this program in a timely fashion or is like rulemaking is needed? What, what's the problem with if you can do this? So we, we would likely contract it out to um, a nonprofit partner. Um, if it proceeds, you know, we're asking for the exemption from procurement to expedite our ability to contract for the service. However, in our testimony, we know we have a number of existing employment programs. So there's a concern it may potentially be duplicative. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Okay, do we need to recess for decision making? Can we move on? Yeah. Okay, please proceed. LBT first. Oh, no. Okay. For decision making for the joint committees. Okay, up first we have Senate Bill 3215 relating to insurance. Members, the recommendation is to defer due to some of the ERISA exemption concerns and potential impacts to prepaid health. Okay, so we're going to defer. Okay, up next, Senate Bill 2547. Okay, to taxation members, recommendation is to uh, um, adopt those taxes amendments in testimony. Okay, particularly the proration uh, requirements in subsection B3, uh, as well as a recommendation to codify DHS's uh, information requirements into the statement criteria. Okay, the effective date of uh, July 1st, 2050. Questions or concerns, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Uh, SB 2547, uh, recommendations passed with amendments. Uh, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Iha? Aye. Uh, Senator Lee, excuse. Senator Favela? Aye. Thank you, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. So for Health and Human Services, we have a Vice Chair Pro Tem, um, with Senator Kehokolole taking the vote. Same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Aquino. Aye. Vice Chair Pro Tem votes aye. Uh, <laughs> Senator Shimo Bukuro. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to Senate Bill 2930 related to employee benefits. Members, the recommendation is to move this with some technical amendments only uh, and a clean date. Okay. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Oh, so. <clears throat> Pass with amendments. Yeah. Senator. Senate Bill 2930. Um, the, the, the recommendation is passed with amendments. Uh, all members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone voting with reservation? 
Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, so for Health and Human Services, same recommendation, Chair votes aye. Uh, noting that all members of the committee are present, are there any reservations or no votes? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, Senate Bill 2973 relate to economic development, although uh, truly laudable uh, what the bill is trying to do. Uh, the uh, department is not ready for prime time as they have uh, uh, said. So we're gonna defer Senate Bill 2973. Okay, moving on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2474. Again, as I have alluded to during the, uh, during the committee hearing, we're gonna defer decision-making to Wednesday the 14th at 3.30 p.m. Okay, so for SB 1580, we've had a robust discussion on this. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Um, we want labor and the employers to work towards, to, towards supporting nurses and the risk that they go through. So we're gonna pass this with amendments. Um, we're gonna delete um, it, the, the, the bill in its entirety and insert a working group Chair of the working groups, the Board of Nursing. Um, members would include a member from HHSH, um, Hawaii Health Systems Court. Three members chosen by the Senate President and three members by House Speaker. Uh, these members are to be those with experience in healthcare, including those who are in healthcare unions um, or healthcare facilities or health healthcare nurses and that's about it. Um, any comments? Oh, and I'm gonna put a defect date on this. We want the discussion to continue um, with a report to the legislator 20 days prior to the next legislative session. Hopefully we can work this thing out. Any comments, <laughs> questions, concerns? Seeing that, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. Uh, members passing with amendments, noting that all members of the committee are present. Are there any no votes? Any reservations? Seeing none, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Yeah, Labor and Technology Committee, same recommendation. So all members present, anyone with reservation, anyone voting no, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. So for SB 2569, Chair's recommendation is to pass only with tech amendments. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Uh, members passing with amendments, with all members present, are there any no votes? Any reservations? <laughs> Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, LBT, same recommendations. Any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. All members present, anyone voting no, anyone with reservation, recommendation adopted. So for SB 2661, <laughs> Chair's recommendation is to defer this due to um, the C Hawaii Work Program, the DLIR existing Hawaii Job Corps Center and Workforce Development Programs. We want the um, advocates to continue working on it. We, we love the intent, but we don't want to duplicate efforts existing at this time. Thank you very much. Um, for Health and Human Services, we are adjourned. Okay, uh, before we uh, um, end this uh, joint uh, committee hearing, I did uh, fail to mention that uh, for Senate Bill 2474, linked to family leave, uh, we'll be voting in this room, okay. room 224. Okay, thank you very much. We're adjourned. Okay, we're still in conference room 224, and it's still Monday, February 12th, okay, 3.15 uh, p.m. agenda. We just have about four or five, excuse me, five Senate bills uh, for discussion. Okay, one minute, one minute only on uh, testimonies, please, and it's okay to stand on your written testimony. Totally okay to do that. In the event that uh, something does happen, and uh, for technology's sake, uh, things uh, shut down, we'll be coming back on the 14th at 3.30 p.m. in the same conference room, 224, okay? All right, so up first, you have Senate Bill 578, Senate Draft 1, related to government. Okay, up first, we have Department of the Attorney General. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Senator Aquino, members of the committee. I'm Robin Chun from the Department of the Attorney General. The department uh, supports <coughs> SB 578 SD1 for the reasons stated in our written test testimony. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, ERS Director Thomas Williams. Okay, we comments. Okay, I believe that's all the testimony we have. Any others wish you to testify? Okay, seeing none, members, questions? Okay, seeing none, let's move on to the next measure. Senate Bill 560, Senate Draft 1, relating to labor. Okay, this would transfer the Workforce Development Division from being directly part of DLIR uh, to the WDC, the Workforce Development Council, uh, an entity that is currently administrated, uh, administratively attached to DLIR. Up uh, first, we have the uh, director. Okay, thank you very much, DHS Director Betts. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, up next, we have the uh, Attorney General's Office. Good afternoon, Dale Fujimoto, Deputy Attorney General, Department of Attorney General, State of Hawaii. We provided written testimony. Just want to highlight some points we made in that written testimony. Uh, there's ver verbiage and wording in um, <clears throat> the removal of is placed within um, in Section 202-5 HRS, Hawaii Revised Statutes, um, that doesn't comply with the Hawaii Constitution. Um, Another issue is that Section 202-2 HRS um, provides additional duties of the Workforce Development Council. Those overlap with duties of the Director of Labor and Industrial Relations as well as um, Department of Human Services. And lastly, there are terms um, in Section 202-5 that are unclear and could benefit from clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on. United Public Workers. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have uh, uh, IBW, Local 1260. In opposition, HGA. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Operating Engineers, Local 3. Okay, also in opposition, okay, Hawaii State Fed, AFL CIO. Andy Pereira in opposition. Pride at work, Kavai. Okay. HNA, local 50. Okay. In opposition. Okay. Agnes Malate. Okay. Also in opposition. Okay. Alan Hayashi. Okay. In support. Okay, we do have uh, a number of uh, late testifiers. Okay, we have Hawaii Teacher Standards Board. Mitsuhiga speaking on behalf of Hawaii Teacher Standards Board. Um, we just, we're standing in opposition on this bill. We are started trying to start up registered teacher apprenticeship program through DLIR, and we feel this would severely handicap what we're trying to do. It would, um, might, we might not even get the federal grant that we're trying to get. We're trying to run this teacher registered apprenticeship through the Department of Labor, which is now recognized federally under DLIR. So we want to keep it the same. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Up next, we have the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters. Uh, Senator, we just want to stand in our opposition against it. Okay, thank you. Okay, Hawaii Worker Center. Hey, thank you very much. Up next, we have the uh, Aaron Tilton, State Administrator, Operating Engineers, okay, also in opposition. Okay, Kauai Coffee, Kamai Kano. Okay, in opposition, okay, Irish Barber, testifying for IATSE Local 665. Okay, also in opposition. Okay, again, late testimony from Leslie Wilkins. Ken Louie. Ken Louie, Chair of the Workers' Council, stands supporting the Workers' Council. 
Okay, thank you very much, Carmia Shiro. Okay, also in support, Allison Higo. Okay, in opposition, any others wishing to testify? Senate Bill 560. Seeing non members, questions? Um, I just have one. Vice Chair? Uh, Labor Department. Uh, hi. Um, just in, in um, terms of your testimony, you're saying that the Workforce Development Council law, because in your current law, you cite uh, the General Appropriations Act eliminated the program ID, transferred appropriation and positions to the Workforce Development Division. Um, can you clarify that? Because the law as it stands now um, still has the Workforce Development Council um, and the Workforce um, Workforce Development Council as administratively attached to the department. So I want to clarify that because we constantly have this discussion. With your indulgence, I'd like to call Casey Washington from our Workforce Development. Hi, Chair Aquino, Vice Chair Marwaki. Um, okay, so the, the General Appropriation, Appropriations Act 2021 uh, eliminated the program ID for uh, the WC, WDC and placed the council, actually, whatever uh, personnel they had back into, well, not back, but into the Workforce Development Division. Correct, but the law still stands that if you look at section 202-5, mm -hmm. the current law is that the Workforce Development Council is administratively attached to the department. The law still stands. It was never changed. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I know that's what we were trying to correct within the two bills that are being uh, sent about to law, The current law stands that Section 202-5, which is the organizational relationships, states uh, that it is administratively attached to the department. Okay. I'd have to get back to you. I, I mean, the law is clear. I mean, I see the law right here in HRS. Uh, but, the, but the session law, the budget, was changed right. by, by eliminating a program ID. Hmm. It did not change the law. Yeah. Well, is that correct? The law still stands as to 202-5. Um, sorry, Senator, I would have to look at the law. And I, I, I know that we need to make some changes as far as the, to align it with what we have in the budget. Usually the law governs the budget, not the other way around. Yeah, so. so if you're saying you eliminate a program ID, that still doesn't change the law. The law still stands that that 202-5, and that is the problem, 202-5 mm. says the Workforce Development Council is administratively attached to the department. Okay, sorry, Senator, I, I... Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I do have a question for DHS. Thank you for being here. Uh, you cite also some concerns um so should this bill pass uh, there's some concern that uh, there's a certain division that may move to the lir is that it was a little bit unclear in okay. the language in section two um it says and i forget i think it's number four vocational rehabilitation programs uh that the wd C would have responsibility for vocational rehabilitation programs. And so that did cause me some concern. Um, I am the administrator of the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation, and we are currently under the Department of Human Services administratively. Okay. So again... So I wasn't sure if there, what the intent was there. So again, there's some concern because, mm -hmm. again, there's related programs um, that are currently under DHS that there's some concern that maybe if this move were to occur, then there would be some issues regarding 
potentially federal funds and compliance correct and such okay. correct we are we are the entity that is designated as the state unit to provide vocational rehabilitation services in the state mm -hmm. i'm not aware of any other anything yeah. within the workforce development that does vocational rehabilitation yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Just one question. Yes. So currently, you receive funds for voca vocational rehab. Mm -hmm. So what is your relationship with the Department of Labor, or is there one? We receive, uh, yes, federal money through the U.S. Department of Education, the Rehabilitation Services Administration. Our relationship with the Department of Labor, in particular with uh, the Workforce Development Council, I am a member of that council. And I am um, involved in creating the unified state plan together with the Department of Labor. We are we are partners uh, in the process of making sure that workforce development programs in the state for all work well together. So the language there of shall be responsible for is what concerns you and if it is coordinating with. Correct. Exactly. When it, yes, that part was just very unclear to me where it says the WDC will be responsible for vocational rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be not so good. So currently it's coordinated with or in partnership with us. What is the We language? work in partnership together. We represent employment for individuals with disabilities. Yeah. So we are part of the work. We want to ensure that individuals with disabilities are a part of the workforce development system. Therefore, that is why we have a seat on the WDC. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to Senate Bill thirty-two seventeen relating I to. Have, I have. Oh, I. Uh, I apologize, Les, Leslie Wilkins. Yes, yes. Leslie oh, okay. Wilkins. I'm testifying for Maui in support of this bill as a private citizen. The reason why I am is I'm concerned that the way the restructuring happened in 2021 with removing the number and the bill and the budget for WDC, we are not compliant with the federal authorizing legislation. We owe the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Um, and I am sad to see that this is devolving between, yes, WIOA says that 51% of the of the Workforce Development Council must be private businesses, but there are labor unions. And as by the prior testimony, um, there are key government agencies that have a seat and a vote on the Workforce Development Council. None of these people, these are the leaders in our state, are um, reaching their full potential. The way it is structured now, uh, we do not have the oversight that we owe asks us to have. We are not setting the performance measures and overseeing them. Um, these voices of both the unions and the businesses and the government agencies are not reaching the economic potential that they are required to have by WIOA. So all that we're asking is uh, for compliance. And we are very willing, um, myself personally even, will work with um, those that testified against will work with um, any amendments needed for this to assure that we are compliant with federal mandates for the federal Title I and Title Three money Leslie, that's coming into Leslie, the state. I, I do apologize. Your one minute is up. We didn't start the clock thank on you. time, but uh, I, I believe thank it was you. over a minute. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, any others wish you to testify? Seeing none, let's move on to the next bill, Senate Bill 3217. Okay, related to the Hawaii EUTF uh, Health Benefits Trust Fund. Okay, up uh, first, we, oh. okay, we have administrator, Derek Mizuno, waiting patiently. Okay, thank you very much. That's all the testimony we received. Any others wish you to testify? Seeing none, let's move on. Oh, sorry, questions, Vice Chair? No. Okay, all right, moving on to Senate Bill 2527. Okay, related to taxation. Okay, uh, first we have Gary Sugud Numa, Director, DOTAX. Okay, we comments. Okay, Department of the Attorney General. Um, good afternoon, Chair Aquino and the members of the committee. My name is Cynthia Johiro, Deputy Attorney General, regarding our comments on SB 2527 
We note that a consequence of the proposed amendment of the tax research credit, Section 110.51H HRS, is that a taxpayer may take the expanded credit from 1231.23 to 1231.26, but also from 1231.2000 to 1231.2010. Our suggestion for addressing our concern is in our written testimony, and I am available for questions. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Up next, we have Surf Pack. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair myung here on behalf of Surf Pack. Uh, given the comments shared by Department of Taxation, we offer uh, clarifying amendments to data server. Um, just for the committee's awareness, uh, uh, higher education and technology and the companion measure did pass out this week excuse me, um, was heard last week and was deferred until uh, Wednesday. Um, we offered very, uh, the same amendments to their office as well. Okay. Available for questions. Thank you very Thank much. You. Up next, we have Hawaiian Telecom. Okay, we comment, charter communications on Zoom. Good chair. Okay, charter communications. Uh, not okay. present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, up next we have uh, IP expert of Honolulu, Ben Robinson, big comments. Okay, Chamber of Commerce. Okay, also with comments, Ruthie Griffin, Hawaiian Electric. Okay, also in, su uh, in support and the uh, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Give me comments. Any others wish you to testify? Yes. Chair, we are first call for the DR portraits in support. Okay, thank you very much. Any others wish you to testify? Okay, seeing none, questions? Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to bring up Mr. O. Oh. 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 No. Oh. I what is the amendment that you had suggested that could um address the AG's concerns? Um, I believe the, I, I believe it was the Department of Taxation. Oh, oh taxation. Uh, clarifying um, the definition of data server. I believe in, initially the current draft includes the vague term large. So we're pro providing additional amendments to make sure that it's designed configured for the process storage uh, for that. Also that the taxable years beginning 2000 to 2010. Correct. For the Attorney General's amendments, we have we don't oppose the clarifying amendments from the Attorney General's office. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, moving on to the last measure, Senate Bill 3370, going to DHERT. So up first, we have DHERT. Okay. Thank you very much. Any others wish you to testify? Okay, seeing none, uh, any questions? Okay, we're gonna recess real briefly for decision making. Okay, reconvening our 3.15 p.m. agenda for decision-making up first. We have Senate Bill 578, Senate Draft 1, relating to government. Members, the recommendation is to move this as a Senate Draft 2. Okay, we're going to include the ERS uh, request for amendments and some technical amendments. And we're going to make this uh, uh, effective July 1st, 2050. Questions or concerns, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Okay, for Senate, uh, Senate Bill 578, Senate Draft 1, um, Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye, Senator Howard excuse, Senator Lee excuse, Senator Babella. Yes. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Senator Yahara is present uh, now. Senator Yahara, you want to hold on? Yes. Next one. Okay. okay, moving on to Senate Bill 560, Senate Draft 1, uh, relating to labor. Members, there are uh, 
some concerns regarding this bill, like, but I'd like to keep it uh, um, going for further discussion. Um, you know, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, recommend a Senate draft two, but a defective date of July 1st, 3000 and some technical amendments. And again, we're going to highlight the concerns made by most of the testifiers into the committee report. Okay. Uh, Senate Bill 560 uh, asked with amendments. Sure. Sure. Oh, oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, sorry. Um, thank you for all the amendments, but um, this this doesn't um, sit good in me, so I'll be voting no. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair for the vote. Okay. So, uh, so uh, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Uh, Senator Lee excused. Senator Favela no. Motion adopted. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Adopted. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Senate Bill 3217 relating to the uh, Hawaii Employer Union uh, Health Benefits Trust Fund, UTF. And members, the recommendation is to move this as is. Any questions or concerns, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Okay, Senate Bill 3217. All members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone voting reservation? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Moving on to Senate Bill 2527 related to taxation. Members, the recommendation is to move this as a Senate draft one. Uh, we'll be putting in the, the definition for data server as provided by one of the testifiers. Okay, we're also going to be putting in some uh, of, uh, we'll be inserting the AG amendments and also dual taxes uh, amendment to make this applicable uh, after December 31st, 2024 for section two and four. And we're also gonna be adding uh, amendments as requested by Charter and Hawaiian Telecom. So we will include them as well and make this effective July 1st, 2050. Questions or concerns members? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Senate Bill 2527 passed with amendments, all members present. Anyone voting no? Anyone voting with reservation? <coughs> Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. And to the last Senate Bill 3370 relating to DHERD. Members, the recommendation is to move this as a Senate draft one. We're going to blank the FTE count as well as the intern count at this point in time. We're going to insert that into the committee report as well as blanking the appropriation amounts uh, and add that to the uh, committee report and effective July 1st, 2050. Senate Bill 3370 passed with amendments. Uh, all members present, anyone voting no, anyone voting with reservation. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes our 315 p.m. agenda. And we're going to go directly into our 317. <laughs> So we just have uh, one measure, uh, member, Senate Bill 2784, relating to tipped employees. Uh, this would repeal the authority of employers to pay tipped employees less than the minimum wage. After uh, a lot of deliberation and a lot of information that I've received from uh, both sides, um, I do believe that uh, this needs to be an ongoing discussion. Um, however, the recommendation is to defer the measure. And the reason being is because I'd like to continue the discussion whether this will impact restaurants and the hiring of back of the house staff and increasing prices um, and possibly find other ways to help tip employees and others uh, on the lower pay scale uh, via tax credits or some other continued discussion outside of this bill um, which could include a phased elimination of the credit in the future okay but for now right now it's going to be deferred okay Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm just, just if you can put in the notes, can we have the, you know, the labor um, to look into this more too, as we deferring this bill, to see what kind of stuff we can gather to going forward. No, it's a very good point, Senator, and uh, I think we'll be having this discussion moving forward with both uh, employees and the restaurant industry. I believe it's only fair that we continue this discussion outside of the bill. Okay, but I uh, appreciate everyone's input. Thank you very much. We're, def oh, we're dismissed. Thank you.